Get ready for a trippy larva light show today on Cool Stuff, Strange Things. The glow worm, one of Australia's most dazzling bioluminescent creatures, is actually the larva of a fungus gnat. The insect, which looks like a magnet, is a carnivore, and they're also very tiny, just a few millimeters long, and thrive in dark, damp caves and the rocky overhangs of the rainforest. The ancient people were spellbound by glowworms and believed they possessed magical powers. Doctors even attempted to harness the insect's power to use it to treat people's ailments. The mysterious bugs have also been depicted as supernatural creatures in poetry and fairy tales. But there is a scientific explanation for their glow. It's a chemical reaction. The blue-green light the larva emits is caused by the enzymes and pigment in their bodies mixed with oxygen in the air. The glow is visible through their see-through abdomens and their rear ends. Similar to spiders, the larva weave webs from the cave ceilings and are stippled with drops of mucus. The bioluminescence is used as bait to attract prey such as mosquitoes, midges, and the occasional cockroach into their ticky-tacky webs. The glow creates an incredible effect at night with speckles of sparkling blue-green light blanketing the cave ceilings and tunnels and walkways, which some have even compared to the Milky Way. The bioluminescent substance is toxic to other insects and animals such as birds, spiders, and centipedes, and serves as a warning to stay away. The insect spends about nine months as larva and must absorb as much food as they can before they metamorphose. And tourists are fascinated by these primitive insects, which require specific conditions in addition to high humidity in order to survive. Ecotourism, however, can harm these fragile environments, and one facility is working hard to find a balance. Glowworm Cave at Tambourine Mountain is the only facility of its kind, and it's a man-made sanctuary for these curious creatures. I sat down with Tambourine Mountain Glowworm Sanctuary entomologist James to tell us a bit more about these glowing butt bugs. Uh, well, my name's James Sifuentes. I'm an entomologist. Uh, I work for the Tambourine Mountain Glowworm Sanctuary, where people can come see glowworms and not harm the wild populations. And uh, we, run, we run tours all throughout the day so people can learn about them. So they're not just going out and looking at things by themselves. There's an expert with them telling them all about their weird and wonderful lives. The Mount Tambourine Glowworm Sanctuary um, is, is the first of its kind, and it, it is one of the, the only um, invertebrate sanctuaries in the world. So often, uh, invertebrates are passed aside for conservation. We go for the, the big fluffy things, the pandas, um, you know, the giraffes, but the little things need protecting too, which is what we're trying to do here. They really are the base of the ecosystem. Believe it or not, it's James's job to catch thousands of small insects every day and release them inside their cave. He has to be careful when he feeds his glowworms because too much food will cause them to turn off their glow, but too little and they'll cannibalize each other. The adult female glowworms are actually a fly um, and uh, they lay 130 eggs um, all at once. It's the last thing they ever do. The little babies that hatch out are pretty much microscopic. They're right on the edge of what a human can see without aid. Um, they are too small to catch any insects or anything else to eat, so they actually eat each other. So out of the 130 babies, um, only 10 to 15 will survive to be four days old. Um, so this is what's called being an obligate carnivore. They have to eat each other. There's no way around it. It's their first food source. Um, those 10 to 15 little babies that do survive are now big enough to be able to go off and start spinning silk traps, which is like a spider web that they use to catch the insects. Uh, and they also glow. So the, the rear of their body has two little organs that glow, produce light, and this attracts insects. The insects um, get caught up in those snares, the glowworm comes up, once the insect is kind of incapacitated and tangled up, it grabs it and it doesn't eat the whole insect, it actually pierces the exoskeleton and drinks their blood, uh, which is the most nutritious part of the insect, and it makes sure that um, they're not wasting space in their gut with unnutritious food. Um, they then discard it, and it's not uncommon to see a glowworm with 10 or 12, 15 X insects in the snares just sitting there waiting to fall down, all dried up and sucked to their bodily fluids, so pretty grim, but uh, they're tiny, so it's cute. Um, <laughs> the um, ones that do reach full size after maybe three to 12 months, depends how quickly they grow based on how many insects they're able to catch. Once they reach about half the size of a matchstick, or you know, an inch or so, um, they'll pupate. So just like a caterpillar turning into a cocoon, the outside of their bodies will harden up and the inside completely rearranges. Uh, what emerges then looks like a very large mosquito um, and the females release a pheromone to attract the males and the males come running to try and find the females. Um, 
they'll mate for about 30 hours. Uh, then the female has 18 hours left to live, they only live for 48 hours. Uh, and they spend those 18 hours laying the eggs and then die of exhaustion. Um, the males live for six days, so they'll run off and find themselves another younger girlfriend, spend another 30 hours mating, then they'll run off and find themselves a third, spend another 30 hours mating, then they too die of exhaustion but with a big cheeky grin on their face. Um, they do this so that the really healthy males get a lot of uh, action, shall we say, a lot of young produced, and the males who aren't as fit and healthy don't get a chance to reproduce. Vampire and cannibalistic characteristics. A, a glowworm's never grumpy, a glowworm's never glum, because uh, how can you be sad when the sun shines out your bum? What a life. Back to the cave, James. What would happen if we lost glowworms completely? We don't know, but there's a good chance... So in terms of ecosystem roles, the ecosystem would probably carry on, but they're like a canary in the coal mine. So because glow... That's a pretty good one. The glowworms are so sensitive that they get disturbed way before the rest of the ecosystem and they're very visual so if the glowworms disappear you can tell straight away and that gives you an indication that something else might be wrong so they are, they are the canary in the coal mine of the um, Australian rainforests. Believe it or not glowworms are only found in Australia and New Zealand with one of the largest colonies located not too far from Tambury Mountain and Springbrook National Park on the Gold Coast. If you make it out that way strange things make sure to stop by Ripley's Believe It or Not in Surfer's Paradise to say good day. I'm Sabrina Seek and I'll be back next week with more cool stuff and strange things.